Hey, it's Pat here, and in this video, I'm gonna share with you a tool that I use that's gonna solve two major problems that you might have as a content creator. So whether you are a blogger or you record something like a podcast or a YouTube video, this is going to help you, and it's gonna relieve so much stress that you might have on your plate. So what are these two problems that you might be having? Problem number one, you feel like you're in the content hamster wheel. That means as soon as you hit publish on something, you're already worried and thinking about, well, what am I gonna write about or record for next week? This adds a lot of pressure, it allows you to not be as creative as you can because you're already worried about the deadline. This tool will help you manage that. Problem number two is over time, you're gonna accumulate a lot of content and you're not even gonna remember what you wrote or recorded from back in the day. And it's really important to know what those things are, to be able to have some place to go and easily find what you've already published so that you can link to them in your new post. That's called interlinking. It's in fact something that matters quite heavily for search engine optimization. The ability to link to something that you've already written or recorded so that you can have this website that's sort of like a web of connections. And this tool is so easy to use and make, and it's something that my team and I use every single day. And you and your team can use it too to have a better mindset when it comes to content creation and get more results too. So here we go, we're gonna dive into the computer. Oh, and hit that like button too, because that'll help a lot of other people who need help with content creation find this content as well. Let's dive right in. So we are in a Google Sheet right now, and I wanna show you how to format this. It's gonna be very simple. Don't worry if you're just not an Excel or spreadsheet type of person. I'm gonna show you how to organize this in a way that you can use this forever from this point forward to help you organize your thoughts, create content, organize your plan, and find your content that you've written or recorded earlier. You, of course, wanna save these things, my content calendar, however you wanna title it. Now, first thing I like to do is format this first row to be centered. So what I like to do is go to here and just center it because this is gonna be the row that has the titles of each of these columns. So let's title these accordingly. Publish date. Then we're gonna go episode number if you happen to have episodes. If it's a blog post, you don't need that. Next, status. I'll show you uh, what that is in a moment. Title, keywords, description, notes, and link. There we go. I also like to make this bold. So I highlighted this row and made it bold. And I like to pull down, if you notice that there's like a gray line right here, I'm gonna pull this down one. So now when I scroll, that one is always sticky at the top. So we're ready to go. Now, if you happen to have episode numbers, that's fine. You can delete or add any new columns that you'd like, but I like to move these around knowing which ones are gonna be longer. Title's gonna be longer. Keywords, description is quite long notes as well, and let's go link. There we go. Okay, next, what do we do? So under status here, it's really important to understand, well, what, what, what are we doing here? Well, status is giving you an update on where you're at with that piece of content. So I like to go in here and click on data validation underneath. And what I like to do is list of items. So the criteria here is list of items. So now I enter items separated by a comma. And what this will do is it'll allow me to create a drop-down menu of certain things. So I like to do things like not started, comma, working, comma, drafted, or recorded, edited, published, maybe finished, creating, however you wanna do it. And I'm gonna hit save. And now if I come down here, you'll see that this now has a little arrow that I can point to and now I have this whole list. And so status is pretty cool because I can go, okay, this is not started. This is the default, obviously. And if you wanna copy and paste each of these, you don't have to go command or control C and then go here and then go here. You could copy a bunch of them and go here. But what I like to do is just grab one and you see this little dot under here. I like to bring it all the way down just as far as I want to be able to have that ready for new things that I'm coming out with later. Now, publish date is interesting. What I like to do with publish date is I like to go here and select the entire column. I do that by selecting the top here, A, and then I go to format, number, date. So now what this will do is it'll add a date. So today is October 10, so I'm just gonna do 10, 10, and you can put the year, in fact, if you'd like to. And what's cool is now, this is a date, of course, but if I double click on this, Wow, there's a calendar now. So if ever I need to change it, I don't have to type in anything. I can move it around if I'd like. Now, if I have consecutive weeks that I publish something, I'm gonna put the second week on here, for example, 10, seven, or excuse me, 24, 2020. 
Now, if I know that everything's gonna be weekly after this, if it's consistently like that, all I have to do is select both of these and it'll know that that's the pattern that I wanna copy. And I take, again, this little dot down here, I bring it down and watch what happens when I let go. Boom, it automatically keeps everything on, well, it's on that Saturday. But if you publish on Wednesday, for example, every Wednesday, you could do it that way. But this is how we understand when certain things are gonna be coming out and it stays consistent on that pattern. Same thing for episode numbers. If this is like episode 34 and this is episode 35, I can just come here and bring this down to, there you go. So I'm filling out information so that in the future, I know where I'm at with each of these pieces of content and what to do with them. So maybe the title of this is how to organize your blog posts and other types of content. That's not a great title, but you don't have to nail the title right now. You can even just put a uh, interview with Tim Ferriss. And that's of course not the title as well, but at least a placeholder for now. Then in keywords, you wanna have keywords that obviously are relevant and this isn't a video about keyword research, but I'll link to some in the description below for you to help you and also something in the card up above. Keywords obviously are important, however, because that is what we will target when we start writing or inputting this into blog posts or into our podcast hosts or on YouTube as tags. The description, you can write a description ahead of time of what it is that you're gonna be creating, including the keywords that you mentioned in there, such that you can just copy and paste that and pop it into your WordPress or to your YouTube or to your podcast host so that you don't have to do it on the fly as you're uploading, you do these things ahead of time. Notes can be for things like just anything, oh, need image of blogger or whatever notes that you wanna have. Maybe you are still thinking about what to include in that post or episode, and you can just add some notes that'll help you there. And then after you're done, including the link. So that way you can grab that link in the future and link to it in future posts, and you can start interlinking these things together. So that's it. Save this, bookmark it after you create it. And the reason I'm not sharing this with you is because number one, it's really easy to put together. And two, you can add your own things in here as well. So if I wanted to add something like, maybe I have a guest, I might uh, insert one column right, and I'm gonna put guest, guest name, and then I'll put you know Tim Ferriss here, for example. Maybe I have another one to the right, guest email address, so that I can reach out to them. Tim at Tim dot Tim. That's not his address, but you see what I mean? Now we can organize this in a way, and this is something that you should be using. Maybe it's you taking full responsibility, maybe it's another team member, but this is how we begin to organize and start to reference these things later on. So I hope this is helpful, and I would recommend batch processing, not just the creation of your blog posts or your episodes in a day, but also the planning. I would take a moment to go, okay, in the future, in the next couple months, what do I have coming up? What do I want and where? And a, advanced it for you is if you happen to be launching anything like a new product or coaching program or offering, whatever, consider what content on your blog or on your podcast or YouTube channel should be coming out around the same time to support that. This is a tool that you can use to support your launches as well and make more noise, get people qualified and excited about what you have coming out and hopefully knock it out of the park. All right, I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, hook me up with a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments section below if you've never done something like this or if this was easy for you to create. And secondly, make sure you hit that subscribe button because I have a lot more content like this coming your way. That bell notification icon will make sure that you don't miss any of it. I have a lot of it coming your way. I just didn't wanna give it to you all up front, but it's coming, so make sure you hit subscribe. Thank you so much, I appreciate you. And when you have a chance, hit that video. YouTube's telling you that this video is the next one that you wanna watch, so click here. Thank you so much, I appreciate you, and as always, Team Flynn for the win.